Hi, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, September 27th, 2024. Thanks for joining us as always. So this week's shows were very good. We had Peter Schiff, a Fox Financial contributor, amongst many other mainstream channels, weighing in on his thoughts on the new uh, currency reset, but mostly the, the golden asset backed uh, component of the reset that will contribute to everything else. Um, he gave some good insights about BRICS that we'll be talking about uh, in next week's shows. Uh, we also had a returned guest, a good friend of mine for a long time, uh, going incognito as B, as he works for one of the largest and most uh, widely known financial institutions in the world, still there. So he has to obviously be surreptitious and in, in sharing his personal details, but he did share a lot of great financial information, chart results that back things up about where he sees the economy, both short and long-term over the next five years. So we pray that you watch that, take notes, and you know download it mentally accordingly so that it really gets into your, your soul because you're going to need that information going forward. Many of you asked about uh, what we'd be exchanging in dollars or other mechanisms. He, we addressed that in the podcast, as you will note. Uh, we, um, we're also scheduled to have Denise Bolin, but unfortunately, she had some personal and business conflicts that restricted her from being on this week's podcast. We have since rescheduled her uh, to October 17th next month, so she'll be added into the cacophony of other great guests. She does send her apologies for not being able to do it, but she is looking forward to reconvening with us next month, so just to you know, set the table there. <clears throat> and now <clears throat> we go into uh, next week's shows. We roll into October. First week of October, we'll have Bill Holter, Dave Champion for part two on Common Law Trust, because when we had him on the first time, there were still some residual questions. So we want to make sure to address that so everybody's on the same page as to how to proceed with that accordingly. Uh, Greg Manorino, good friend and brother, glad to have him back on once again as a monthly guest. And a new guest we're excited to have that we've been trying to get since March, but he was told not to come on until such time. And that is the one and only Loy Brunson, who's going to be sharing his latest updates on his pending case in the Supreme Court to rescind the fraudulent 2020 election. There's been rumors swirling that he did or didn't win, and he's gonna address that along with some other initiatives that he's doing that will help us return back to the constitution and sound money. So we'll be excited to hear what he has to share. We also have a, another report with Chris, the co-channel owner. He's got some new updates for you regarding Club Patriot. We did receive some of your uh, form inquiries. He'll be getting those to me so I can address those you know, presently. For a couple of you have been trying to reach out to me on the back end. And he's also got a, a new twist that we're doing, a, a little exciting uh, giveaway that we're going to be doing uh, since we're, we're coming to the climax of everything, as you know. So there'll be some exciting updates with that. So we'll see what he has to say. Now, on to the headlines. Aaron Calhoun, after seven years with Paramount Global, <clears throat> excuse me, where she led communications for Showtime and Paramount's streaming division, is leaving the company at the end of September. Calhoun's departure comes amid broad cutbacks at Paramount as the company looks to streamline roles across multiple departments. The company has announced it will lay off 15% of its U.S. workforce, eliminating roughly 2,000 jobs ahead of its merger with Skydance Media. <clears throat> excuse me, Comfort Food Restaurant, Crew Cafe on 18 Pickney Street, has been a staple of the Charleston culinary community since 2001. But in a letter to crew devotees, chief owner John Zucker announced that his establishment will close after dinner services on Saturday, September 28th. Israel intercepted a missile fired by Hezbollah near Tel Aviv on Wednesday on an, un an unprecedented attack by the militant group that reached deep into the country's commercial heartlands and marked a new escalatory step in the conflict between both sides. People in Tel Aviv and the central city in Netanyahu woke up to sirens on Wednesday as Israel said its air defenses intercepted a surface-to-surface -surface missile. For the first time ever, a missile fired by Hezbollah has reached close to the city, Israeli military says. We've talked about that, so you shouldn't be too surprised of what's coming between the Kim Clement attack between Israel to Iran and rather Iran to Israel and then Israel to Iran in the grave surrender. Disney has axed roughly 300 employees across various corporate departments as the Mouse House continues to look at ongoing ways to trim costs. The round of Disney layoffs affected human resources, legal, finance, as well as other departments. 
The latest layoffs come after Disney let go of roughly 140 employees in its television division, representing about 3% of the workforce in July. In May, Pixar laid off 175 workers. <clears throat> the budget motel brand Motel 6 will be acquired by the Indian travel company Oyo <clears throat> from Blackstone Real Estate for roughly $525 million, companies announced on Friday. With roughly 1,500 locations throughout the U.S. and Canada, Motel 6 will add Oyo's ongoing expansion into the U.S. hospitality market. Oyo, which was founded in 2013 and expanded into the U.S. in 2019, currently operates 320 hotels across 35 states. A famed Mexican restaurant loved by Anthony Bourdain is set to close after more than 20 years in operation. Mescalrica, Oaxaca, in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood, announced that it will close its doors for the last time on October 1st. The restaurant first opened in 2003, featuring the first Mezcal-focused bar in the country. <clears throat> General Motors is set to lay off 1,695 employees at its Fairfax Assembly and Stamping Plant in Kansas City, according to a worker adjustment and retraining notification notice dated September 19th. An award-winning dairy company has gone bust. Best in Global Food Company has announced it is under voluntary administration. The South Australian-based company employed 159 workers in the state and was the parent company behind the Edwards Crossing Cheese Company and Marbles Brands. The brands were available for sale in supermarkets across Australia, including Woolworths, Coles, and IGA. KPMG has since taken control over the company. The Washington Post is laying off a quarter of its workforce from ARC XP, the publisher's standalone software business, <clears throat> the latest change as the company aims to turn its business around under new leadership. ARC XP, which began as an in-house publishing tool, has expanded in recent years to service non-post businesses, such as Reuters, Gray Media, and France's Le Parisien. Uh, the unit, which a couple of years ago has considered a spinoff on sale, has also serviced non-publishing businesses such as the NBA, Golden State Warriors, and energy company British Petroleum. Paramount Global unveiled a second wave of staff cuts Tuesday morning as part of a larger bid of the owner of CBS, Comedy Central, and MTV to reduce costs and a fraught era for traditional media companies. In a memo to employees, Paramount co-CEO George Cheeks Chris McCarthy, Brian Robbins told staff that, quote, in order to set Paramount up for continued success, we are taking these extreme actions. And after today, 90% of those reductions will be complete, end quote. Canadian businessman details being imprisoned in China for 1,119 days. A man has detailed how he was kept captive for 1,019 days in the Chinese government. Michael Kovrig, 52 was detained in December of 2018 on espionage charges and apparent retaliation for Canada's arrest of Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou. ASCO Noble plans to cut about 2,000 jobs globally, around 5% of its workforce, as it moves to cut costs and increase efficiency. The Dutch paints company, which houses Dulux, Polycell, and Cupernal brand said Tuesday that it aims to simplify operations and streamline its management structure in a bid to drive growth. It's official, the iconic sunny colored trucks of mail ordered food companies Yellow, formerly Schwann's, will make their final delivery on November 8th of 2024, marking the end of an era. The company will cease operations after over seven decades in business. Founded in 1952 in Marshall, Minnesota, Schwann's, as it was known at the time, provided incentive new door, truck to door delivery method in order to get the family dairies ice cream products to consumers nationwide. <clears throat> it later expanded into other frozen goods such as pizza and pot pies. In 2022, it changed its brand to yellow in an effort to modernize and offer consumers the type of service they've come to know and expect. Cisco Systems, the tech giant known for its networking equipment and software, has announced another round of layoffs that will impact hundreds of employees within the Bay Area. This move is part of a global workforce reduction of 7%, which translates to approximately 5,900 jobs worldwide. The layoffs are scheduled to take effect on November 15th, leaving many workers facing an uncertain future. Federal prosecutors indicted New York City Mayor Eric Adams on Wednesday, the New York Times reports casting doubt on the moderate Democrats' future as chief executive of the country's largest city. 
<clears throat> the U.S. Department of Justice had been investigating whether Adams in 2021's mayoral campaign received illegal foreign donations from the Turkish government. This probe came into public view in November when federal agents seized the electronic devices first of an Adams campaign aide in charge of funding, fundraising, and then Adams himself. Now, here are the real-time gold, silver, and crude oil prices as of this broadcast. Gold is at an all-time high at $2,691.90, so it's approaching that 2700 mark. Silver is up at $32.50. You'll note that earlier this week, it went up 5% in one day. Brent crude oil holding at $71.87. <clears throat> now, here are the latest deaths and resignations. Toronto Dominion Bank has picked a new leader from within its ranks to take over after the retirement next year of Chief Executive Barat Marzani, a succession that has been hastened by the bank's struggles to resolve failings in its anti-money laundering controls and settle investigations by U.S. authorities. Marzani will step down as the bank's next uh, annual shareholders meeting in April and TD Board's intend to appoint Raymond Chun, a veteran of the lender of the head of the Canadian personal banking to take over as president and CEO. <clears throat> Chun's first responsibility will to become chief operating officer in November with responsibilities of all TD's lines of business before stepping into the top job. <clears throat> New York's chief equity officer at the Office of Cannabis Management, Damian Feigon, has resigned from his post effective November 27th despite being cleared of retaliation allegations according to Green Market Report. This decision follows months of controversy beginning with his administrative leave in March after a cannabis uh, processor, Jenny RG, accused Fagan of retaliating against her company. In Rome, Italian designer Alberta Ferretti announced on Tuesday she is stepping down as creative director of the eponymous brand she founded more than 40 years ago. On September 17th, you attended my last fashion show, quote unquote, Freddie wrote in a letter sent out by email. <clears throat> it was announced today that Caroline Rush, CBE, will step down as CEO of the British Fashion Council in June 2025. The fashion trailblazer has led the organization for over 16 years, during which time she has championed the creation of pioneering programs that unlock and elevate British design talent. A Dallas pastor has been removed from his position indefinitely over an inappropriate relationship he had with a woman, according to the church's leadership. Lead pastor Steve Lawson stepped down from his position with Trinity Bible Church after admitting the relationship. <clears throat> the church has not given any specific details of the relationship or identified the woman specifically involved. Hoda Kopp has announced that she is leaving today, early next year, but will remain part of the NBC family. She tearfully recounted on the Today Show on September 26, about how her 60th birthday celebration in August prompted a decision to make a change. According to Bloomberg, Boeing Company ousted the top executive for its defense and space division in the first major shakeup by Kelly Ortberg since he took over as chief executive officer last month. Ted Colbert, a 15 year veteran at Boeing, will leave the company with immediate effect and be succeeded on an interim basis by Steve Parker the Defense Unit's Chief Operating Officer Ortberg said in a message to employees on Friday. The Cruise Lines International Association announced that President and Chief Executive Officer Kelly Craighead will step down at the end of 2024. In a message from CLIA to members, Global Executive Chair Jason Liberty revealed that Craighead would be giving up her positions as she begins to seek out her next big change. <clears throat> Warner Music is now expected to lay off more employees than originally planned as part of a restructuring drive to free up more funds in order to invest its core music business and accelerate growth for the next decade. The company will lay off about 750 employees or roughly 13% of its headcount compared to its previous target of 600 employees or roughly 10% of the workforce. In Colombo, Sri Lanka Prime Minister Dimesh Guanardena has resigned, he said on Monday, a day after Marxist-leaning Anura Kamora Disayanke won a presidential election in the prime debt-ridden Indian Ocean nation. Guar Darina, 75 years of age, took over as prime minister in July of 2022 after former president Gatayaba Rapakanja um, fled the country and resigned in the face of widespread protests unleashed by the worst economic crisis in decades. Nike CEO to retire after four years at the helm. 
The head of New York City's public school system, David Banks, said Tuesday he will step down at the end of the calendar year, becoming the latest high-ranking departure from Mayor Eric Adams' administration amid escalating federal criminal invest investigations. <clears throat> Excuse me, Senegalese intellectual and politician Amadou Matar Mabo, who headed the UN's cultural legacy, UNESCO, for 13 years, has died at the age of 103, Senegal's press agency said on Tuesday. Mabo, who served as Director General of UNESCO from 1994 to 1987, <clears throat> was a symbolic figure in Senegal and the wider African continent, where he championed the causes of education and peace. <clears throat> Excuse me, David Davis, beloved frontman of the Warrior River Boys, has died from injuries sustained in a car accident near his home in Cullman, Alabama. He was 63. <clears throat> the automotive industry has lost one of the great saviors of speed, Michael Valentine, president of Valentine Research and one of the leading pioneers in the radar detection business, passed away unexpectedly at the age of 74, according to an obituary posted at Cincinnati.com. <clears throat> in Louisville, Kentucky, Tom Watson, a Hall of Fame broadcaster reporter whose long career of covering breaking news, including decades as a broadcaster editor for the Associated Press in Kentucky, has died. He was 85. Watson's baritone voice and sharp wit were fixtures in the AP Louisville Bureau, where he wrote broadcast reports and cultivated strong connections with reporters at radio and TV stations spanning the state. <clears throat> His coverage ranged from compiling weather-related school closings to filing urgent reports on big breaking stories in his home state, maintaining a calm demeanor regardless of the story. <clears throat> Courtney uh, Coleman, a 30-year entertainment finance executive who most recently was CFO of film and TV studio Happy Accidents, has died. She was 58. The company confirmed the news to deadline but did not provide it the cause of death, which it was said was unexpected. She died August 12th, according to a Toronto mortuary. <clears throat> Chilean journalist Eva Vergara who in her four decades at the Associated Press covered stories, including the first protests against the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet and revealed key information about abuses by members of the Catholic Church died on Tuesday, she was 68. Adrian Bailey, the singer, actor, and dancer whose long career in Broadway musicals ended when he fell through a trapdoor and suffered serious injuries before production of The Little Mermaid has died, he was 67. Bailey died Saturday at a rehab facility in New York on the day before his birthday. His brother, Carl Bailey, told The Hollywood Reporter he had recently fallen in his New York apartment. Dan Evans, the former governor of Washington, who also served in the Senate, died Friday at his home in Seattle at the age of 98. Evans was a popular three-term Republican governor. He served as governor from 1965 to 1977 and then went on to serve in the Senate from 1983 to 1989. He left office out of frustration with the chamber for being too rancorous, the Associated Press reported. Former economic journalist and diplomat Peter Jay has died at the age of 87, his family has announced. Tributes have been paid to Jay by colleagues in both the political and media world following the news of his death. Jay's family said he died peacefully at his home on Sunday. Eduardo Zal, a TV set designer on Extreme Makeover Home Edition, has died. He was just 58. Zal died on September 20th at the Desert Regional Medical Center after sustaining injuries during an apparent stabbing on September 10th in Palm Springs, according to a report issued by the Riverside County, California Sheriff's Department. <clears throat> Parley Cycles today has announced the passing of its founder, Bob Parley, who died peacefully at his home in Massachusetts following a four-year battle with cancer. He was 70. Bob and his wife, Isabel, founded Parley Cycles 25 years ago, revolutionizing the handmade bicycle industry with his expertise in composite materials. Key figure behind 1996 Olympics, A.D. Frazier, has died at the age of 80. Frazier was CEO of several prestigious financial institutions and played a significant role in helping Atlanta host the largest peacetime event in history. Reverend Al Sharpton's father has died at the age of 93, the social justice activist and TV personality announced Saturday morning. Al Sharpton Sr., who was once a real estate investor and boxer, was not always on the best of terms with his family because of his decision to walk out on them, his preacher son said in the past. Omani poet Zahir al Ghaffari, a pivotal figure in the Sultanese's literary world, has passed away at the age of 68 after a long illness. 
U.S. rock legend Freddie Salem has died at the age of 70 due to cancer complications, his former band, The Outlaws, announced. Blind Luck, the Kentucky Oaks winner and three-time champion, three-year-old Philly out of 2010, died in Japan on April 22nd, according to the Japanese stud book database. Cause of death has not been included in the database, but the 17-year-old daughter of uh, Pollard's vision died two days after she was uh, recorded to have produced a cult by Kitsand Black. <clears throat> Kat Glover, the singer, dancer, and choreographer who worked with Prince during his late 1980s pomp has died. She was 60. Glover's death was announced on her official Facebook page and it was announced with great sadness she has passed. Please allow her family to mourn at this difficult time. No cause of death has been given. Ramin Abdulbabali, a longtime competitor in IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge, died September 23rd after a battle with pancreatic cancer. Abdulbali was a co-driver with Rob Eklund Jr. in the number nine stoner car care Aston Martin. <clears throat> he and Eklund had just achieved their series goal, the bronze class victory at the Mobile One, 12 hours of savoring weekend when Abdulbali was diagnosed. United States Greco-Roman wrestler Alan Vera died Monday night after health complications from a summer cardiac arrest while playing at a club soccer match in New Jersey. Vera was just 33. Catherine Crosby, a 1950s Hollywood starlet who gave up her film career to marry Bing Crosby, the Oscar-winning actor, radio star, and mellifluous white Christmas crooner, and as his widow became chief protector of his legacy after a damaging tell-all memoir by his eldest son has died uh, September 20th at her home in Hillsborough, California. She was 90. David Graham, the voice of the Daleks and Doctor Who, has died at the age of 99. The English actor, who also voiced butler and chauffeur Aloysius Parker in the 1960s television series Thunderbirds, provided the robotic voice of the sci-fi antagonists in the 1960s and 70s. He created distinctive speaking styles of the Daleks and Peter Hawkins, another voice actor, and describing their method in an interview with The Mirror in 2015. Best-selling author Nelson DeMille is dead at 81. The man behind one of the world's most familiar voices has died again at the age of 99. That's uh, David Graham, my apologies. A former BBC television and radio presenter, Chris Searle, has died at the age of 81. His family has said, Searle, who was born and raised in Bristol, worked on a popular program throughout the 70s and 80s, including at the Deep End and as the longtime host of Points of View. The founder of City Eye Hospital and King's Medical Supplies, Dr. Amos Kibata Gitelko, is dead. In a statement on Friday, September 20th, the hospital board announced that Kibata passed away on September 20th, 17th, 2024, after a courageous fight with cancer. Tony Soper, wildlife presenter and BBC Natural History Unit co-founder, has died at the age of 95. TV veteran known for shows like Birdwatch and, and Beside the Sea has passed away at, as of Wednesday. Trailblazing actress Cleo uh, Silvestri has died at the age of 79. Her agent is confirmed. She was the first Black actress to play a leading role at the National Theatre and to have a regular leading role in a UK soap opera, Crossroads. Silvestri appeared at a TV series including Grange Hill and the Channel 5 reboot of All Creatures Great and Small. <clears throat> Benny Golson, a preeminent tenor saxophonist who was also the composer of such elegant jazz standards as I remember Clifford, along came Betty and Whisper Not as died September 21st at his home in Manhattan, New York. He was 95. His daughter, <clears throat> Brielle Golson, confirmed the death, but did not provide a specific cause. Tung Sin Park, a flamboyant South Korean businessman who became the face of an influence peddling scandal <clears throat> that rolled Congress in the 1970s, <clears throat> excuse me, and who went to prison nearly 30 years later after he was uh, connected with another lurid bribery scheme, this time on behalf of Iraqi despot Saddam Hussein has died September 19th at a hospital in Seoul. He was 89. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the arrests and, res excuse me, deaths and resignations. Now on to the weekly commentary. It's a pretty simple one, folks. Stick with the ones who get you, who have always gotten you, and who will accommodate authentically who you are. For those who mind, don't really matter, and the ones that matter, don't mind. There's a time, folks, when our country used to strive to be better instead of championing mediocrity. Of course, I'm speaking to the collective here. Yes, President Trump will definitely help pull us 
out of our country after a, over a century long tailspin, but we must still continue to do our part to help each other and become our own central bank to shoot for the highest standards and become legends within our respective families for many generations thereafter. In order to do that, we must become self-sufficient. And as I said, become our own central bank. So no, in the future, no matter who the figurehead is, we're not dependent on a president or a party to save us. There are those of you watching quietly and tacitly from behind the scenes. We feel your presence, and we know that these truths resonate from the Lord within you. We're happy to get the responses we get from our faithful followers, and that's fine. That's our staple core. But we also know there's people behind the scenes, as I said, that are watching. We're imploring you now to please come out behind the shadows and share your testimonies, your truths, your experiences with us. We desperately need to hear from you and also other quality followers do as well. Your testimony may make the difference in the lives of countless people throughout the world. This helps us counteract the darkness from the minions that come in here to try to disrupt with nefarious intentions. This concludes the weekly wrap up for this week, as we always do as breaking news comes out, as we wait to see for the Israeli grave surrender and attack, and for the uh, SEC decision to drop the appeal in XRP, which we know is coming as of October 7th. We will, of course, uh, report those aforementioned breaking news updates to you. If anything should come out in the meantime, we'll always, as always, let you know. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Buckle up. October is the climax for certain. And uh, there's going to be a lot of domino effects happening one circuitously after the other. Be safe. Take care of each other. God bless. Have a great weekend. And bye for now.